how do you convince a nervous system that it can trust those around it? And I start understanding more and more about the unification or the integration of social behavior or mental health and physical health, that we start to see ourselves not as a social there and our body here, but this integrated nervous system that evolved with such, I'm going to say, miraculous features that one of the most important, quote, medicines happens to be the person across from us and how they treat us. We try to fix things with interventions without understanding the beauty and the power of our own systems that really can emerge with tremendous self-healing capacity when the nervous system is not under threat. That top-down effect, meeting the bottom-up signals, has to create a narrative of welcoming. So in a sense, we have to honor our bodily feelings. We can't, uh, in a sense, evaluate it and say they're bad, because that will just promote more uh, defensiveness and threat physiological. We have to say, wow, what an interesting nervous system I, I have. What can it do? So the narrative has to be shifted so that it becomes more one of respectful observation. And I would actually, in the world that you're in, it'd be witnessing. We're witnessing ourselves with respect, not evaluating ourselves without respect. Right. I found it so helpful for people to understand those processes so that they could get away from shaming themselves. Yeah. Well, it's so, in a sense, so simple, isn't it? Because shaming and blame, how's your body feel? Does it feel open, accessible? Is it going to, in a sense, recruit its own homeostatic systems to heal on any level? Or is it going to hunker down and protect itself from the world that we're in? The world that we're in basically uh, treats individuals like if they ramp up the motivation, the person will, will change. So make it worse so they'll get better without understanding that as you make it worse, the body has no place to go but down. Rather than externalize it, we could internalize it and say, I have tremendous capacity if I can create a safe context where my body doesn't go into threat. Then my nervous system supports homeostatic function, which means helps me heal. But if we now take an integrated nervous system model in which we say that mental health and physical health are really part of uh, attributes of the same nervous system, then we start seeing as our body heals, our ability to socially interact and our mental states become more uh, uh, resilient, more uh, adjustable within the world that we're in. So we have to have much better appreciation of the, uh, we we'll use the word duality, but the bi-directionality of mental and physical health and illness. The metaphor is the old Star Trek movies where if they're getting into a dangerous place, the energy shields go up. The energy shields are using energy. Mm -hmm. Defense uses energy and diverts in our brain the ability to reach higher cortical areas because we can't, in a sense, be creative, be spiritual, be benevolent unless our bodies are safe. Are the cues that your body's responding to cues of safety or the cues of threat? So, what we now really would say is, uh, safety is the treatment because if we remove cues of threat, the body can then move back into this calmer, safe state to support its own health growth and restoration. Welcome to the 2021 Radical Recovery Summit presented by the Killaby Center for Recovery. This is Lynn Fraser, your moderator. This year, our theme is Feel It, Heal It, a new paradigm of recovery featuring a diverse group of thought leaders and innovators people who are working on the ground in the new field of addiction recovery. Go to RadicalRecoverySummit.com to sign up and watch free.